Greetings, everyone. We are uh, working our way through Chapter 7 in Search for a Nonviolent Future. And uh, it's in this chapter where we discuss, uh, as it were, the acid test of nonviolence, how to apply it at the biggest scale, which is to say against the war system. And uh, I, toward the end of this chapter, I have a quote. I'm now on page 200. And a quote from none other than uh, Robert McNamara, who since the publication of Search for a Nonviolent Future has come out and said, I think I made a big mistake by supporting the war in Vietnam. Uh, wonderful hindsight, but it does lead one to ruminate on the fact that there are so many good people who are sucked up into the war system and they do a lot of damage and a lot of of violence and disruption against their better wishes and their better judgment because that's where the system is pointing. And in my terms, the terms that I've developed all along here, the system draws upon violent energy. It operates on a threat system rather than an integrative power. And so nothing that you do is really going to uh, change the ultimate outcome until you change the input, that energy. And it's in that spirit that I'd like to quote this remark of McNamara's about the fact that Mother Teresa of Calcutta, now Saint Teresa of Calcutta, uh, was given the Nobel Prize for peace. And some people didn't quite see the connection. Here are these two dots, you know. Okay, so she picks up uh, indigent, dying people on the street and gives them a death with dignity, what does that have to do with peace? Well, he, he caught it. He said, uh, Mother Teresa deserves Nobel's Peace Prize because she promotes peace in the most fundamental manner by her confirmation of human dignity. And I've been thinking about this a lot recently because of the November 8th, 2016 presidential election. I'm sorry, I won't be mentioning that again. Uh, but I've been thinking about uh, the very unfortunate, very unhappy image that occurs toward the end of Brave New World, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where uh, he says, if you want to see the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. In other words, the desecration of human dignity is the input and the outcome of our present systems. And what that suggests to me is that anything we can do to elevate human dignity will undercut that system and create a new one. And on the bottom of the next page, the last uh, sentence in this section, I came up with something that had become kind of a, uh, a meme, it was repeated in many different places, and uh, I think it's good to think about. So our job, I say here, is not to be always thinking how to stop war so much as how to start nonviolence. Nonviolence, the ultimate elevator of human dignity, which, uh, as we've said several times in these talks, Practitioners of nonviolence are sometimes quite aware of that they're doing what they're doing because they don't lose their soul, they don't lose their humanity, uh, that nonviolence really is an elevation of and a, a utilization of a drawing upon uh, human dignity. So intuitively, that tells us that nonviolence should be a way to end war, and we just have to continue to figure out the implementation of that. 